everyone. This is Michael Cole. I'm VP of Marketing at Everflow. Today, I'm joined by Nicole uh, from Tackle. Uh, Nicole, can you give the quick introduction on yourself? Sure. So I'm Nicole Smith. I'm the VP of Marketing at Tackle. Um, and I've been at Tackle for three years now. And Tackle's a software company. Um, our mission is to help ISVs generate revenue through the clouds, through a cloud go-to-market strategy. And um, we work with AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Microsoft, and Red Hat. Nice. And what's an ISV? Yeah, an independent software vendor. So any software company. Yeah, just a, the cloud's term for software companies. Yeah, it's so funny that in that industry, everyone calls them <laughs> ISV, ISVs yes. and everywhere else. It's like, it makes, it's a weird term that's so standard. It is. I didn't know what it, I never had used that term before coming to Tackle. So thank you for asking me what the acronym was. <laughs> <laughs> and what is Tackle? Yeah. So our platform and our team um, really work with companies. So we want to help our companies like work to identify who the right buyers are, help you grow your, you know, your cloud motion through co-sell with the cloud providers, and then really transact um, at scale through these different um, hyperscalers. And, you know, it's really not about the listing. It's about selling through the clouds and growing revenue through them as well. And would you say that you're more, are you an agency first or a technology company first in terms of like how you yeah. do the breakout? That's a great question. So we're a platform software company first. Um, and the services side is really something like that we're just dipping our toes into and starting mm -hmm. to add that this year. Um, so that's exciting to really help our clients um, and customers scale in a whole new way with the services component of it. Yeah, it's just the natural process of any SaaS company to be like, exactly. You know, a lot of clients need a lot of help and yep. y y a little help goes a long way. Yeah, and it's something, you know, we've been doing for a long time is just, you know, kind of just helping do that naturally. And, you know, we've done a lot of things like create a knowledge base, an academy to like guide customers. But, you know, we provide a lot of that support. And so, you know, as we go bigger and go up market, you know, customers need a lot more of that support. And so, you know, how can we offer, you know, different packages that allow them to do that? And as VP, VP of marketing, like internally, what channel do you spend your most attention on? Like, what do you focus on? in terms yeah. of like making sure your team executes the most on? I wish there was one, but <laughs> I don't feel like there is. I think, you know, it's really hard because I don't think there's just like one touch point marketing can have. Probably, you know, there's, you know, as you know, there's like 15 to 20 touch points to even get a prospect in the door. There's 30 more before, you know, someone becomes a customer. So I feel like I just kind of obsess over all our channels probably and what, you know, what we're doing. And, but I think, you know, if there's one that I'm really focused on right now, it's community. That's been newer to us right now. Um, we just started building that out this past year and are really growing and scaling that. And I think it's even more important, you know, in this time of how can we make sure our customers feel supported, that they are like, you know, getting the answers they need, that they're growing, you know, and finding help and support and best practices for other customers. So that's something I'm just like really excited about as the community and how we're building that at Tackle. And for a community, is that say like Slack? Is that what? What is the primary like channel for yeah. the community to connect? We're using a um, a product called Vanilla for that. It's Vanilla forums, and so it's not through Slack. Um, you log in online to it, and um, you know we went back and forth of what the best tool was for that, and landed on that. But yeah, lots of different research and asking our customers what they preferred. And you've been pretty happy with the tool so far. We really have, yeah. Great great integrations to other products as well that we're using and analytics and Salesforce and all of that too. Awesome. And what was your path for becoming VP of marketing? So, I mean, maybe a little untraditional. I started on the PR agency side um, and at the agency I was at, I was able to switch over to building out their internal marketing team and professional services group there. Um, and then, you know, after doing that for quite a while, actually, I made the jump over to a startup, um, came in as the first marketer there, and was able to build out and lead their marketing team. And then I think just kind of rinsing and repeating that motion over time at different startups. Um, I just, I love building teams and go to market programs and lucky enough now to be getting to do that for the third time at Tackle. And I think, you know, it's just kind of a combination of hard work, um, great coaching and a lot of luck, honestly, along the way. 
That's really awesome, though. It makes sense. It's always yeah. hard when you do agency stuff to sort of not just become Groundhog Day of repeating. So going yeah. from agency to like doing the internal marketing for the agency, like that's a really smart path towards developing yeah. all the other skills that you you miss out on as an agency. Thanks. I, I love to hire agency marketers as well, because I think they have such a great, especially for startups, because I think they really know how to juggle and multitask and, you know, use their time effectively as well. Yeah, you better be organized. <laughs> <gonna do that. laughs> yes. All right, let's hop into like some more long form okay. discussion questions. So first off, can you give me the quick rundown of the major cloud marketplaces that you focus on and why they matter? Sure. So we focus on the hyperscalers. So AWS, Microsoft Commercial Marketplace, uh, Google Cloud and Red Hat. And I think marketplaces are super important as a good market channel, because especially right now, like when the market's really volatile, buyers cloud spend continues to grow. So and I won't like over throw out tons of stats. But if you're newer to marketplaces, a lot of people don't realize how much of buyers cloud spend is there. And that just continues to grow. So um, we did a big state of cloud marketplaces report last year, this is our third year doing it. And some stats that we have from that are that IDC found that um, 90 billion was added to the total yearly cloud spend last year. And that's actually the highest growth rate um, since 2018. And then in our report where we surveyed cloud um, buyers and cloud sellers, um, two thirds of the survey respondents from that said that they allocated more to their cloud budgets this past year, and then 68% are gonna increase it again in 2023. So like when I think about those numbers and why I think cloud marketplaces are important, um, more buyers are buying through there. And as they're investing more with the clouds and putting more budgets there, software companies are really quickly figuring out like, okay, we need to be attaching to this growing budget in the clouds. And, you know, the market's really shifting from this growth at all costs to efficient growth. And, you know, we're seeing sales teams and companies need more routes to market and a new way to reach buyers. So they're saying like, okay, there's a spend that people aren't, you know, really touching. So how can we leverage marketplaces to do this and do that with less overhead as well? So that's why I'm like really bullish on marketplaces and think it's such a great channel that we see more companies exploring it as well. Yeah, so two questions. The first one mm -hmm. being Google, I mean, I think that all the cloud technologies have just been yeah. like printing money. They're growing so fast. But then in, in this last year, everyone's like, they're losing an insane amount of money on this. Has that had any impact towards like the customer experience of using say Azure or Google Cloud or anything else? Because I know that everything looked great and then everyone's like, wait, but they're losing yeah. tons on this. So I, I don't know if that affects anything or not. I don't think we've seen an ex anything on the customer experience side. You know, we still, still see more features coming out. And, you know, I think especially on like the cloud marketplaces, they seem to be investing more in in that side of things actually on like how they can help support their customers and make sure that they're doing a great job there on the marketplace side of things. So I've seen a lot of promising things from all of them. Cool. And then the other question on that is once you're in these marketplaces, typically who is the, the roles in a company that are reaching these buyers? So you get your listing, everything's set up mm -hmm. to go, but who's actually usually the, the role that reaches that the actual buyer and is talking with them? Is it, I like, yeah. So at like, um, at an ISV, like who's going to reach out to them and stuff like that? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Or what is the cycle? Is it usually like a starting with marketing, you're emailing a list within it? Is it a partnership role to reach out to all of these different buyers? Or do the buyers come to you and then it's your sales team that's just closing? Yeah, yeah. great question. So we actually see it like it's definitely not a build it and they will come like you put up your listing and you're just done. And that's actually where I think a lot of like the misconceptions about marketplace come from. And, you know, we get kind of put in a bad position sometimes because marketers come like I'll have, you know, CMO or VP of marketing come to me and be like, we, you know, channel and alliances or sales like got our listing set up and we're not getting anything from it. Like, what do we do? And I'm like, well, that's you have to like market it just like and invest in it just like you do with any other channel. So um, I really see it. It has to be a go to market effort across the organization and all cross functional teams have to be involved, but you need to have one central owner. And usually we see it as being like the owning of channel and alliances owns that, but 
you know, sales has to be taught how to sell through this new channel. Like they have to be talking to their buyers very early on in the buying cycle about like asking them, like, do you have a, you know, relationship with any of these cloud providers? Do you have committed cloud spend with them and understanding how to sell through this channel? And that's usually on, you know, the channel and alliances team to like bring this knowledge to them and teach them these things about the relationship and then enable them to go talk to the buyers about that. So very cross-functional. And then, you know, marketing should be doing like promotional work to help promote the channel as well. So on the promotional work, what is the, the typical playbook there? Is it paid? Is it certain co-marketing? Any yeah. things you've seen that have been effective on that side? Definitely the co-marketing side. Um, but that really helps once you have like a few wins under your belt and you can start building that better together story with the cloud providers or you know anyone like that. Um, and then I do like the paid aspect as well. Um, so people can find your listing, you know, if you're going to do something like it's much quicker than the organic side, if you can pop some paid ads up and direct people to your listing that way. I also think it's a great idea to on your website, you know, talk about it as well. Like tell buyers, like you have an easier way for them to buy. And that way, you know, put it into emails, customer newsletters, um, especially it's, it's approaching like end of quarter, it might be way easier to take a renewal through marketplace, rather than, um, you know, doing it direct. And so that could accelerate a deal and bring it in quicker. Awesome. And what types of businesses and products are seeing the most success through this strategy? Yeah. So I think we see a lot of them. Um, you know, we primarily work with B2B companies in the SaaS space. Um, but, you know, I think you'll see it all all across the board. Um, you know, I think that you'll see that like marketplace strength has historically been in the infrastructure and DevOps space. But one interesting trend also is that like over the last year, we've seen a lot of biz apps companies develop a cloud go to market strategy and really see success. Um, and I think, you know, we like some of the companies we've seen there are like Anaplan, Full Story, G2, um, Outreach, Sales Loft, uh, Salesforce, and more sell through there. And uh, for, it was like 42% of buyers in our state of marketplaces survey actually said they had purchased um, business applications through one of the marketplaces in the last 12 months. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that in this coming year, too. That's super fascinating. And you mentioned that works G2, which is an interesting mm -hmm. choice for that sort of play. Yeah. Is it because is there something specific that they're tying to the cloud or is it just their standard like intent services offering? Like how, how are they making that work? Because they're definitely like the least traditional one. And that's really interesting. It is their, um, I believe it's their fast track uh, product. If I'm saying that right, they have a specific product offering that they have listed on the marketplace. So they brought, they built something specially for that audience. Maybe. I don't know if it was specially built for that audience, but they went to market with one specific product, I believe. Cool. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And they actually, if you um, on the marketplaces, there's also something really cool that G2 has done. is like have a partnership with a lot of the marketplaces. And so on all of them, like the marketplaces really thrive on like showing reviews as well. So on AWS marketplace, you can look and see for most products like reviews on them and they tie into G2's reviews. So you want to like show that customer proof and validation. So I think that's a really th cool thing between G2 and AWS marketplace, being able to show that and tie in your reviews to that as well. So for competitive research, how do you have to be using, uh, say, Amazon Web Services to see who's, risk who's listed in the marketplace? Or is that publicly available somewhere? No, if you want to see, like, you can just actually go on, you can just type in like AWS Marketplace and go on AWS Marketplace and search that if you want. Like, it's open to everyone. You don't have to be using anything in particular or like have access to it. I've never thought of doing that, even though it's very obvious. <laughs> yeah. That's the way to know if you have a good fit is find out similar products that you exactly. can, uh, compete against. Yeah, you can do it with any of them, which is really cool. To so all of us that were too lazy to have searched for this before, is there <laughs> any new vertical? Can you talk a little bit about like sort of the up and coming verticals um, that are seeing success through the go to marketplace strategy? Yeah. I mean, I think like the biz apps one is still interesting. 
I think we're going to continue to see a lot of growth in like machine learning um, this next year as well too. Those are probably that two I'm really most in, like most interested in continuing to watch. It'll be interesting. But, since yeah. is making an AI company now. Yes, exactly. Um, and if you go on AWS too, or even, I mean, go on any of them, they all kind of categorize them. AWS, Microsoft, Google all categorize them differently. And, you know, there's 50 different categories of companies. And so it's cool to see them and like watch what changes each year and the new companies added. I mean, they're, there are so many companies on there that are selling that way. And you're, you know, your access, you have access to, you know, 3 million buyers, you know, or more buying this way and it just keeps growing. So. So speaking about buyers, what is the, the most common types of buyers? Like what is their role yeah. that are going to these marketplaces, finding new solutions? Yeah. So that's a good, really good question. Um, it's really changed a lot. So, the perception and kind of what's been historically happening is that it was developers or IT, but we've really seen probably the past like six months to a year is that the owner of the budget is moving from IT department to the CFO or finance and ops. Um, and that's because cloud budgets are seeing significant investment, as I mentioned earlier, and the purchasing is moving from like the non-technical departments to leverage the budget. So, you know, they're understanding that now there's all these different applications on the marketplaces, like we were talking about, like with biz apps and everything. And so all the different functions like marketing, sales, products, CS, want to be able to access the budget and unlock that so you can draw down in your committed cloud spend. So the CFO is like, oh, I should probably be involved and understand this. And they're working with the procurement team to maximize the value they can be getting from the cloud spend. So we're seeing it kind of sit more and more there and the CFO be involved in this. So they can be saying like, oh, you're buying this software. Hey, we should go tap in and lever, you know, go purchase it from, you know, Microsoft or something like that. And have you seen anything around, say, like tied SDR campaigns? You get a listing. Have you seen where sort of they like, focus their attention. If we have a new listing, are we sell it? Are we going towards the tech people and being like, here's how this helps you on the tech side? Or are you going towards operations and any sort of insights on that side? Yeah, I think it just probably depends like what sort of product it is, like who they yeah, might market definitely. it to. Yeah. Cool. What does a company need to have in place before they even start considering getting a marketplace listing? I think, you know, the basics would be some things like product market fits really important. I don't ever recommend anyone like start selling if they have not, if they can't identify like what their value proposition is for the cloud buyer. Um, another thing is really having an owner. Um, someone internally does have to own making cloud selling successful. And then involvement from everyone on the go to market team and system. It's not just an alliances charter. And you, you should have top down support too from the CEO and, you know, really understanding. I think the alliances team has to understand how they're going to engage with the cloud providers and their teams and like really learn the ins and outs of marketplace and co-sell. And a lot of companies like that we're working with too have might have a channel motion already in place. And so it like starts to make, you have to think about how do you rethink your existing channel model to include marketplace in that. And we're seeing like channel and marketplace become one and that really complement each other too. But I mean, I think really when I think about the most important things are someone owning it and everyone, you know, having that alignment as well. And in terms of building the relationship with the marketplace itself, mm -hmm. how do people normally go about that? Do you get a listing and you usually have a contact? Is it, you should go to conferences first, build the relationship mm -hmm. and then start building it out? Yeah. I would, you know, once you get that listing up and, you know, you start that process with one of the cloud providers, they're going to be introducing you to people. And so, and then a lot of times, like what I recommend is that once you start registering opportunities and deals um, through, you know, the co-selling portal, the partner portal at the cloud providers, then you're going to start, it's going to map you to their reps, like their cloud salespeople. And that's when they also start to start taking notice of you. And then, you know, you can start to make those introductions of like, hi, I have this deal, you know, we've sold this and we're interested in you. And I mean, kind of revenue solves all problems. I think yep. it builds relationships too, as well with them. Um, 
but the, you know, they will, they will make those relationships for you. You know, also I think, you know, working someone with like a tackle, we can help facilitate and manage those. But you know, if you're still doing it on your own, you have an opportunity to do that. But again, it does, I think it takes someone dedicated in a system to working at it, understanding their big complicated organizations. And you just have to kind of like, take the time to map out, you know, who you want to be working with, like marketing is going to work with someone different than product is and sales is and alliances. Awesome. That's really uh, great answer. You covered everything. <laughs> Sweet. And what do you wish that some of tackles uh, clients in the early days uh, had understood quicker about marketplace listings and making this work? I think probably just, like setting expectations of what for the company of what marketplace is and not. Um, I think, you know, we've again gone back and just had to like level set a long time along the way of, you know, it's, it's not a magic channel that revenue just starts throwing through naturally. Um, you know, you really have to put the work in and educate internally, you know, understand when to talk to buyers about it in the buying cycle, you know, developing enablement materials, um, and working with the you know cloud providers as well and then i think it's also really working with people to like build a plan around the multi-year journey um that it's really great like we have a lot of people um and i think really seeing success around if you do five percent of revenue um of your total revenue in year one through marketplace like that's amazing and then you can build up to like 10 to 20 percent over the next year and that's crazy. Like that's awesome growth. And I think some people come in with expectations of like, Oh, this will be 50% of my revenue in year one. Yep. And, you know, again, it's, we've had a lot of work to do on our side of like setting the right expectations and managing those expectations. So yeah, it's just something you kind of learn over time that you have to set those right expectations on our side. And then like making sure the customers are setting those with their teams too, after they, you know, when they're going through this whole process and building their strategy. And when you're talking to a company that is a good fit, has a great product, is there a success? They're starting this for the first time. What's usually the expectation about how long they should expect this to take before they start seeing like some stuff that they can show internally of the success of it? Yeah, it really varies. Like a lot of customers are coming to us like because they have a deal that has told them like, hey, I want, I have to buy this through marketplace and um, you're not listed there. So and they're like, Oh, I got to go get listed right now. Um, and then other customers are coming to us because their competitors are there and they want to be there as well. Or, you know, they realize that this is, you know, kind of the future of go to market. And so they need help, you know, building this out. So it might take them like, you know, six months or something to get that go to market motion going. And so I think it just kind of depends of, what the organization structure is and who who's built bought in on that and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then what they've done in preparation, you know, we have a lot of customers that maybe they've done this twice in previous roles and that like they know, they know what they need to do. And then someone who's brand new to this, um, I would, yeah, sorry. I know that's not a great answer, but it, there's not really like a template that just makes sense for every company. People come at different stages, I think. No, I think it's very enlightening to just sort of walk through yeah. the process of it. Yeah. And in that case where they've done this at other companies, what it, like what is the number one reason they're saying like, okay, I know I know how to do this. I know this is great. I'm going to go to tackle. Because they don't want to build it themselves. Um, it it usually you know if you're building it yourself and doing all the integrations, then you're taking your engineering team off of cycles that they can be doing, you know, building your own product for yourself. Um, and it usually takes about something like six months or longer to do it yourself. Um, and with us, you know, we can, you know, get you up and running in a month or so. And it also is like, we're a multi marketplace. So we can, we'll work with all the cloud providers and it's very hard for one company to do this for all the different cloud providers. And if, you know, something with one of their integrations change, then you have to understand all that and do it. So, you know, with the tackle platform, it's like one pane of glass. You don't really need to know all the things about each cloud provider. Was it typically like when someone signs up with tackle, they do one integration with tackle and then you handle the connections to all of the different marketplaces? We do. Yeah. We usually recommend people start with just one cloud um, to get started. And then, you know, as you see success with one, you know, understand where your buyers are buying, and then you can expand to other marketplaces instead of doing all three at once or something like that. 
and that's because you have to do a lot of work and and promotions and everything it's just easier to have like one success and build a strong relationship and then you can repeat it exactly and we don't want people to fail um Mm -hmm. you know we think you know we know it's hard in a new motion for companies and so we think setting up for success means starting with one and then expanding from there awesome and if you could choose to be in charge of uh, a company in like the ideal category for one of these like go to marketplace strategies, what kind of product, like what kind of, like if you could join any company, what would mm-hmm. be that product and which cloud marketplace would you start for it? And this isn't saying this is the best for everyone. This is just like, <laughs> if I were having to look for a new job, I'd be like, this is yeah. the one. That's a re- such a good question. Um, I mean, I think something with like machine learning would be really interesting just kind of seeing the explosion of that but it again i would probably go back to what my criteria is earlier about if you know they've got to have a strategic long-term commitment to this but i then think like as i would look at the product and understand like which marketplace to start on so if if all those things fall into place um you know something that i think is really cool is that you know tackle and can take your pipeline and look at who's in your pipeline and we can give you a report that tells you um which of your buyers have the highest likelihood to buy and through which mm-hmm. marketplace so that's why i would how i would start to determine like which one to start with because it, it you don't always know like you could have a relationship with more than one cloud provider so that lets you understand who to start with and where to go so that's how i would make that determination and then so like you know understand product market fit you know cloud go to market and then build that strategy and if they're willing to invest and then go figure out, like start with that marketplace where we have the most opportunity and buyers. Yeah. I think that's a huge perk to just be able to be like, okay, which one actually has the most buyers yes. focus that, that helps so much. Yeah. It's like marketing and sales gold. I think like so many ABM campaigns opportunities as well too. Great. And I, we talked a little bit about this, but I'd love to dive a little bit more into it. Yeah. So once you're listed, what are the main like early tactics that get a lot of success? Sure. So some of the things like once you're listed that I think like really help people be successful is starting in like really to enable the sales team. And I think it's continuous. You can't just do like a one hour session with the sales team. Like here's marketplace and you're done and you know how to sell through it. Um, it's in a, it's continuously enabling them, like showing them like the questions to ask, when to ask them. Um, the you know if you show them that like uh, it's called tackle prospect, but like telling them how to leverage that, you know how to talk to buyers about that and things like that. Like I think that's very cool. And then it's also enabling the cloud providers and the relationships you have there. So like kind of selling to and through the cloud providers is something I talk about. Um, and then if you're, you have a deal, um, you know, focusing on that co-sell motion, if you're going to, when you register that deal through the cloud providers, again, like this should result in more introductions to the team members, um, you know, and they're going to win when you win. So like you connect with them, like start explaining what you do and start collaborating on that strategy to win together. And if you, you know, you know, those like high likelihood to buy accounts, like there's a chance they've already probably purchased through marketplace. So then there's a, probably a higher chance that the cloud provider sales rep wants to work with you too. So I think it's just kind of setting all that up, like make sure the sales team like knows the questions to ask, you know, take the right deals through marketplace. Don't register every single opportunity, make friends and connections with the cloud provider reps. And, you know, that starts to build like a really great, you know, cloud got a market flywheel motion that kicks everything off and starts the revenue cycle. So I'm assuming that it's pretty similar, but with Salesforce, the way we've been thinking about it for mm-hmm. our conversations with them is just yeah. whatever we're going to offer is like our customized solution for that marketplace. It it has to be, I mean, this might be specific to Salesforce, but they the salespeople make a lot more money by upgrading people on Salesforce than they do from selling external products anyway. So mm-hmm we had to position it. So how do we make them better at selling their own solution and and scaling their own customers? And then we're just like a nice add on that lets Mm -hmm. them win more Mm -hmm. business internally. Is it the same for other marketplaces where you're trying to do something that helps scale the users already existing cloud account? 
Not really. Like they're incentivized to go out and sell, you know, something like tackle or your own, your new product as well. And, you know, have a book of business around that. So um, I, yeah. So a little bit different than the Salesforce side of things. Cool. Yeah. It's super interesting. Yeah. And then I wanted to go into uh, one of the things you were saying, which is just enabling the cloud provider to co-sell your product. What mm-hmm. kind of assets and things like that typically are being used in a situation where you're, you're actually enabling them to promote you more. Yeah. So we do a lot of different things around that. Like we create specific like presentation decks for them around like who we are, what we do, um, success stories as well. And then, you know, we might do like kind of lunch and learn sessions with their teams, um, you know, specific collateral just for them that they, their sales reps can share as well when they're talking to someone where we might not be involved in the conversation yet. Um, we also send, you know, I might call them like WinWires monthly newsletters to the cloud mm-hmm. provider teams where we're sharing like, hey, here's all the deals we did last month, you know, call out certain ones like that they, they support pretty much all of them, I feel like, but, you know, call out certain wins and certain reps along the way, share growth numbers, we'll share customer success stories. We also share like upcoming things that we're doing with them, um, content and blogs and things like that. So always trying to stay very top of mind too with them. I really like that win wire. That's a mm-hmm. awesome way to handle it with partners. Be yeah. like, Hey, here's all of the different like shared deals here's the updates on them and here's a happy testimonial for one of them. That's yeah. really powerful. Like we've never done that motion, but it makes complete yeah. sense. Yeah. It's really powerful. I think to do that. Awesome. And from your own side of how you're getting pipeline for tackle, what are the main channels that you've been focusing on building out and why? Yeah. We've really been focused on building out ABM um, lately as a company. So we're going a lot more up market. Um, We've, so that's obviously been a big focus. Um, we've done a lot of great stuff with leveraging Six Sense and Uberflip. Six Sense was the conference where I met you at. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, we really want to understand, you know, buyer behavior. I think that's so critical and, you know, create more personalized campaigns for them. So, and I think, you know, what's great about ABM is it utilizes all the channels that you're currently working on too in your marketing effort. So, you know, it focus on, you know, like what content are we doing? How can we use SEM in this? Like what are the events that we can tie into our ABM programs? Um, product marketing, like what's coming out and how do we talk to, you know, our prospects about this as well? And then, you know, brand is super important with that as well. So all of this has been a really big focus and part of our plans and programs, especially as we're thinking about this next year. And for your ABM is the BDR team under marketing or is it a sales reach out once you find the right like uh, intent signals? Yeah, they're under sales, but um, we work very closely with the sales leader who leads that team. And yep, so it's a sales reach out, like once we find the right sort of intent signals and we partner like super closely with them to under, like identify our target accounts for that. And where is there anything with like the ABM strategy where you're like, this is something I want to replicate in all future companies? Has anything specifically been like, oh, this is amazing? I would, I, I've never been a big person who's like tools are such a critical thing, but I honestly think Sixth Sense yeah. <laughs> is something I would take with me to every single company. Um, I had not used that before Tackle, but it's, it's really been a game changer, I think, of using it. And the reps have, like, gotten behind it. They love using it. It's made them excited about doing ABM and working. And, like, we just started with the SDRs. And we've had AEs begging for licenses, like, after seeing the success of it. So we're expanding it now to the AE team. And that's just not something I usually see is, like, AEs begging for something like that. Yeah, getting so awesome. people excited about anything. Really yeah. <laughs> And in terms of there, like, what is like the categories of signals that are the most valuable? Because I've heard a few things that sound really amazing, like keyword, like who, what people are searching on keywords. Is there any sort of like bucket of information you find is like the most exciting part? That's a good question. Um, I think like when people are vis- like um, start visiting like the demo page and pricing page on Tackle, like we do have an open pricing page. So I always find that like, a huge driver of like, okay, this is interesting to me. Um, and then I think just const like the more visits you start seeing at different points of the sales cycle are really exciting. But yeah, I, I haven't thought about that as much 
that question. So that's a good one. That's really interesting. So yeah. there's people that have already reached your website, but they just never interact with anything. Like there's a, right. a lot of opportunities there that you would be missing out on if you're not saying like, hey, you you were interested at one point. We need to make sure that we actually yeah. answer your question so you yeah. can convince people internally. Is that a big yeah. piece of it? It definitely is. Yeah. And we've seen a ton of opportunity too with Uber Flip as well as a result um, of really creating like customized campaigns from that um, of reaching people. One of the things we do is look at people who are currently on marketplace, but yeah. are not using tackle for that. Um, and kind of looking at them and, you know, putting them into different, again, like ABM campaigns and creating customized content landing pages for them and catering resources like to where they are and those needs. And I think that's been like super powerful to see like emails. Okay. They work with like then when they're clicking on that and you can see the content they engage with on those Uber flip landing pages and like what they're reading. It's like, okay. I think maybe I would take my answer back and say like, that's a higher intense signal, honestly, for me is like those pages and see like kind of clicking into the deeper stuff. And then you see people like request a demo from those pages too. That's super interesting. How is that structured? Is it, are these landing page, like how are the landing page structure? Is yeah. it just like a long form content? Is it just sort of like, here's a, like a little bit of concise content and then a bunch of links. And then you're looking at those links to figure yeah. out what's working. It's like, it's about like six to eight different pieces of content on a page of like, hey, and like some short copy at the top of, you know, kind of explaining, you know, why they're here. We set it up as like, hey, we created like some personal pages for you. And then, you know, a little bit deeper, I guess I would say like middle to bottom of the funnel content for these people. Like we don't need to explain what marketplace is. They know what that is and kind of explaining, showing off the knowledge that Tackle has about marketplace since they're already there and, you know, why they should be using us versus just, you know, being on there themselves. That's super interesting. And I feel like the challenge with all that stuff is it's really easy to have way too much data where it's really hard yeah. to take action, but it sounds like the way you're doing it, like there's very clear, these are the signals. And once we have these signals, we have not only SDRs, we have very specific landing pages mm -hmm. to drive them to. So everything is, has immediate action from it. I think so. I think we still have a lot of work to do and trying things out and like everyone does you know, <laughs> <Always>. <laughs> iterating on it. <laughs> but I think we're going and we're going, we're doing well, you know, but yes, always, always things we can change and improve on. And for the ABMs, like the actual like marketing side of ABM, is that mostly display ads? What is uh, the sort of like paid side of that? Yeah, it's mostly display ads that we're doing. Um, you know, we do do things like virtual events that we've done, um, you know, like wine nights. Um, we've done some like in-person dinners as well, like looking to expand our footprint and what we do there this year. We've done like gifting through, um, you know, direct mail and things like that too. Awesome. And is there anything that you're seeing right now that you're just super excited for coming in like the next couple of years as a marketing leader? I think... I mean, probably something I think you might agree with me on, but I think the ecosystem side of things on marketing, um, I really get excited about like, I think organizations are just going to continue to like embrace the ecosystem play, um, especially with like on the marketing side as well. I think like marketers um, and sales have seen this as just such like a partner mandate before. And now I think marketing like really has a lot of power to keep developing a strong ecosystem, like and driving revenue from it, especially like efficiency is the mandate right now. Let's use what you have. And um, I know you're a part to a part of this as well, like the partner hacker summit they did um, in November and just the topics around that. But yeah, it's, it really gets me excited to see, I think, like what we can all do together rather than just like all trying to silo ourselves and only work, you know, just trying to sell on our own. But I think that's like marketplaces play into that. But there's so much more beyond marketplaces with ecosystems as well. Yeah, that, let's explore a little bit of that, because I think yeah. it's interesting, especially for a marketplace. So, I mean, pretty clear on our side that like we are just always in yeah. love with like cross beam and reveal when you can do mapping uh -huh. and sort of like what are your customers as a partner like shared customers between you and a partner that's very powerful and especially like co-marketing towards their customers that are your prospects and vice versa is awesome yeah. are you seeing anything on the marketplace side of 
I'm in the marketplace, you're in the marketplace, and that opens up a ton of opportunities. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I haven't seen that as much come through, but I think like with some of these and like cross beam and reveal things like that could be a huge like potential opportunity there as well. Yeah. And I think like marketplace could be like, you know, there's opportunity for companies to play a facilitator role in that as well. Yeah. That's super interesting. Cause it, yeah. I mean, it's the easiest way to get set up. Cause that's always yeah. a challenge too is like, Oh, we need to integrate here. It's like, no, just, Mm -hmm. You already have our solution in the marketplace. You have that solution. Yeah. Here's how you can use that data in both places to be more successful. Yep. So yeah, sure that'll exactly. be a fun playbook that'll be developed over there. Yes. Cool. And is there anything that I didn't ask? Do you think that uh, marketers or companies that are looking into a go-to-market place strategy that they should be considering? I would probably just say... You know, I would start sooner rather than later with something like this. Um, and, you know, do your research. You can read lots of articles on our Tackle's website if you want. But, you know, but also don't do it without a plan and, you know, investing properly in something like this. And there's, there's definitely still lots of opportunity out there. Why there are lots of companies on it. I think, you know, if you do it right, you can be very successful with this. Yeah, I think that's one of the takeaways I had from this is with any company you're considering joining, it's worth just doing a quick look like do they are they do they have competitors in the marketplace? Does it mm -hmm. is there any way when you look at a marketplace, is it reviews the easiest way to see who's kind of being the most successful there? Well, is there any other insights that sort of be like, oh, this type of company is doing really great here. We make a ton of sense to also be here. Yeah, they don't like no, none of the marketplaces will really share like any of that data with you of like, oh, in this category, they're doing great. Um, so yeah, I mean, reviews might be like the best way I think to do that, because you really can't get data on like, oh, they're generating this much revenue through this or anything like that. But at least you know that they spent a lot of time and work to get there. And yeah, exactly. It's a good indicator. And if there's reviews, especially, then you have a really good indication that there's something there worth exploring. And exactly. if there's something worth exploring, then it makes sense to start the process of getting all the internal alignment and buy-in to go after it. For sure. Yeah. And I always think it's worth looking at, like, if your competitors are there and, you know, and if they're not, maybe, like, that's still a great opportunity, like a white space opportunity for you to easily access budget that, you know, your buyers might be there and you can always, you know, get a get a free report from us on who what your pipeline looks like and if your buyers are there before you, you know, go down a path of, you know, purchasing that, doing a listing. And how do people go about getting this uh, free report? Um, we actually have, you can reach out to Tackle. So we have, I'll, I can send a link um, if you want. It's like when, maybe when we post it, I can add a link to it. But yeah, we offer a free um, scoring of up to 250 accounts. What scoring of what? Uh, up to 250 of your accounts in your pipeline. Oh, yeah. So yeah. scoring your pipeline to say like how yep. many of them have uh -huh. buyers within the marketplace. Yep, exactly. That's fantastic. And yeah. if people want to learn more or learn about you or anything else, what's the best way for them to learn about Tackle and yourself? Sure. So yeah, learning about Tackle, um, our website is just tackle.io. Um, for me, I um LinkedIn, um, you can feel free to message me, like always happy to chat about marketing or anything else or cloud go to market. Yeah. So we'd love to talk to people. Awesome. Thanks again, Nicole. This was fantastic. Thank you for yeah, sharing. Thank you for having me, Michael. Appreciate it.